basis and uh, means that uh, it, uh, the price includes the definition price. If Manila is being now shut down and the, the shutting down price is increasing. That was not a private project. Uh, okay. Uh, just to provide a bit of context, uh, Finnish oil water was mentioned here. I believe the main investor actually is different, but it doesn't matter really. Uh, about transparency and, and uh, the price of electricity, uh, as far as I understand, uh, because of the changes in uh, uh, security regulations and because of some uh, mistakes that they made during the construction, uh, the project now in Finland is, is going to be finished five or seven years later than it was originally planned. And what is more, most important here, I don't think that anybody has an answer what would be the final cost of that investment, not by even a hundred billion of euros, and what would be the price of electricity that will be, uh, that will be produced there. And this is Finland. But in, in, in any case, so all... Sorry, no, no, it's fine. Um, no, I just wanted to add uh, that, well, a couple of things, but I mean, when I was talking about transparencies, I'm not sure if I was clear on this, uh, it wasn't about the debate up to now, which which I can't comment on because I haven't been here and participated in it, although it seems that there hasn't been enough transparency about it. Um, but what kind of city system you're setting up for the future in terms of if, what are we getting ourselves into here, you know? and if 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 we're being talking about very real issues and it does sound like they're very real issues you know uh, about you know price in in and about you know what kind of ethical considerations should be taken in very real issues of public concern that um i think you know e even if maybe from from the political point of view you think okay the issue here isn't transparency it's price or the issue here isn't is is ethics it's it's not about transparency if if people feel like they they don't know what they're getting into and there seems to be warning signals of hang on a second we're not going to be able to ask questions about this later hang on a second there isn't already information about this that we need it, it's quite natural for the for the for the issue to come to transparency maybe that's why we're having this debate and um, very quickly, the point about honesty, I mean, uh, honesty, I feel, is a kind of a concept which may be slightly um, out of, not out of date, but in the old days, you know, we would, we would kind of trust our politicians to kind of be honest and go behind, you know, go behind closed doors and, and do what was in our best interest. Now we have the luxury of being in a world where where you know we have freedom of speech, we have a right of access to information. We even have influence like the like the internet, where a lot of the information about potential price or a lot of the information that that, it, that is being dealt with here could quite easily be published on websites. Could quite easily be be given to anybody who asks for it. You know, it's not all about security. A lot of it's quite practical, real questions that the public has has a right to to know about. It. And and you know, how difficult is it to 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 publish an Excel with all the calculations that have gone into the calculation of a price, and I'm not an expert on this, but but you know part of uh, of the right of access to information, and particularly the right of access to environmental information, is your right to be able to participate in public decision making, and that means that you need the same information as far as possible, where it's not going to do harm on commercial interests or other things. You need the same information that the government has, or that those who are in the decision making project uh, process have. So that you can also come to to a decision, so that you, so that you can see on what basis those decisions are making. If we don't have access to the information on which on the, the on which basis those decisions are making, how can we possibly um, be, be be taking informed uh, decisions or be in a situation where we can enter into a proper, honest, clear, and responsible debate? Uh, but just, just a short uh, remark. Uh, uh, I, of course, I completely uh, agree with you. But but uh, going back to to Arunas's, uh, remarks uh, of uh, price, uh, pictures, uh, everything. I think uh, now what happened now uh, and what is substantial election is over, and new government, uh, despite being uh, all all the way along in, in uh, aggressive opposition to the project. Now they have uh, a possibility to study the project uh, as, uh, with, with, with the possibility in mind, uh, somewhere at the back of, of the head, that it might be our uh, project. And uh, basically, again, to examine 
uh, prices you uh, picture you whatever and uh, and uh, uh, I hope uh, a, a new government uh, would use uh, such a possibility in the best uh, best uh, possible uh, way and maybe uh, the the uh, opinion uh, will be uh, different uh, this uh, this uh, time, but but uh, again, uh, it, it's, it's very important for, for example, for Mr. Budkevich, uh, um, not not to uh, rush to talk about uh, nuclear energy future, but uh, because when he uh, is in a rush, he starts building a nuclear power plant in Electrain and something like that. And uh, again, it's, uh, in, in this after election lull, it's the best time to, uh, uh, to go back uh, to, to numbers, uh, papers, uh, treaties, access, and to, to, uh, to, to have a look with, with a uh, somewhat clearer mind. Thank you, Vicky. You said uh, we have our speaker, <coughs> last but not least, Vilus Bernatonis, he's a yeah. lawyer. Private lawyer, independent lawyer, and uh, what is your remarks? Uh, do you see some challenges for transparency? That, that transparency apparently has been uh, kind of on the side uh, uh, of, of the discussion, although I think it's quite illustrative uh, and about it makes a point about transparency. But uh, just I, I'm I'm not a part of the. Uh, by a project, I'm not a part of the of the nuclear power plant project, but uh, my assistant just went on the web and printed out this concession agreement with the information from the Ministry of Finance, which was provided to the Parliament with some explanations. Uh, I don't know about other countries uh, in, in similar projects. I don't know, for example, about Tokyo or maybe other projects. I don't know, but for Lithuania, this is very new that you are able to do that. And, and this, is, uh, this is something that cannot be forgotten. For example, Lithuania has sold Lietuvos Dujos, the uh, gas transmission network, which uh, included a certain, uh, certain covenants on the price of natural gas. You cannot download these on the internet. And you cannot, you cannot find them. You, you will be told every time uh, that this is uh, actually a confidential information and uh, nobody has a right to disclose it. And uh, so th this project stands out for Lithuania, I would say, and uh, in a good sense uh, for transparency. I don't know if it stands out in a European context. Uh, I live in Lithuania. Uh, but, and one couple things I think in this discussion about untransparency issue uh, really uh, we, we maybe have somehow missed out. Uh, this contract, with all due respect to, to the, the people who drafted it and the people who, uh, who approved it and who will maybe sign it, will not change Lithuanian law on access to information. It cannot. No, yes. And there's no chance for that. There is no... Uh, Mr. Rajas has left, but there is no addition to the Lithuanian law. This is legally nonsense. This cannot happen. Uh, all this is is a promise by Lithuanian government to Hitachi that they will safeguard something. But this promise will not change the duties of the Lithuanian government to the public. That is a false promise. And those duties will stand, and the public will have these same rights, which we have now in our legislation, which is... I think in this respect quite harmonized with the EU law uh, and these duties will stand and then the public will have the right to ask questions and the government will have to answer and these considerations that you mentioned they will have to be and they will govern and there's nothing to be f to fear that the government will now sign a contract with Hitachi which will somehow prohibit me as a citizen to ask for information well, this this that's cannot what it happen says. Yeah. That's what it says. It, I, I mean, it's uh, not applicable. Because well, but what it says to translate, I mean, I, re I just read it once. So, uh, Hergos, please forgive me. You understand it much better. But uh, what it says in my legal reading is that the government will not be able to take it as an excuse that this is their obligation to publicize something for them to disclose confidential information received from Hitachi. That means that if the government publicizes it, this could be 
uh, treated by Hitachi as a breach, but this doesn't stop the government's public law obligations to the to the to their citizens. And uh, really, I think uh, I think well, really, this discussion about uh, economic parameters of the project and and really, this is all very interesting, and I I, I know too little about it as a lawyer to comment. Uh, but one thing uh, I really was listening carefully, and uh, and one thing I I, um, I haven't uh, heard. Uh, yes, there seems to be a lack of presentation. At least some of the people here they said, okay, that the commissioning cost went presented enough. Uh, the reactor parameters, maybe something else. Uh, I don't believe I heard that some member of the public has applied or some some source has applied to find out a an actual information that interests him or her and that was you know kind of Bart said no you cannot have access to that your example about uh, Visaginas uh, nuclear as far as I know there's only one company uh, called Vaya uh, it is a holding company therefore it's small but it has the shares of all of these big uh, energy companies therefore when you consolidate it financially you get a consolidated huge group of companies, but when you take it standalone, it's just a 50 people company. Maybe that's the misunderstanding, but uh, I mean, it's all, uh, when you were talking, I even opened the internet <laughs> and, and, and you could see that structure in the, in the annual, annual report. That's so. the example of how unclear everything is. No, but it's, it's, clear, it's I mean, for, for me it's clear. I don't know, but uh, okay. But I mean, if it's not clear for you, But, but that's a denial of right, right? If you have been denied, but why should we that's have a denial. Right of the law in this, in this article, if we know that it will not work because the law is above any article, why we should write this article? Yes. Well, uh, you know, legal negotiations, right? legal negotiations, and I tell you, as a, this is what I do for a living, is a really complicated thing. Yeah, but public has and a right in a contract, you, know. you don't write what you want. You write what you can agree the with the other party. The so, so we want yeah. to know who negotiated on the behalf of the Lithuanian Republic. Why does the Lithuanian article get into this agreement? It, and if the person, the lawyer who represents, as I understand, the Lithuanian Republic, uh, is of you also think that it's okay <coughs> this article is okay? And as a citizen, I see the problem. No, but you as a citizen, you can apply. I mean, this. You only, you only know about this article yes. because Lithuania was very... Access to information doesn't talk about you applying. If it's a strategic political state project, I don't think as a citizen, every citizen has to apply for information. No, no, no. But, uh, I mean, what was, what was there that was concealed? That was my point. What was concealed in this project? What was said? No, this is all secret. You can't find it out. Like... For, I mean, this example with the gas price formula. You, you ask, and that's the answer. No, this is secret. You can't find it out. But, uh, so just, you, just a minute. Just a minute. Do you see any conflict? No, no, no. I, I, mean, I do. I will really share with you. I was really listening carefully. And, uh, um, you, know, um, you know, as a representative of Transparency International, to me, to have this discussion already is... Uh, great advantage to understand how things work. And I'm delighted to hear from uh, you just that, you know, we can rest in peace and uh, the Lithuanian law as we have it prevails over this concession agreement. Because Absolutely. quite frankly, a lot of people could not answer that question. But actually, why I raised my hand was uh, for a different reason. You asked proactively of examples, you know, whether we have any examples in Lithuania about that. And you know, this is precisely the question that I asked my colleagues in the EU, who already have had the experience with filing for information uh, on nuclear energy matters. And I spoke to the people in the Czech Republic and Hungary who have had that experience, and their answer was really not promising. Basically, it boils down to this. They tell you that, yes, you can file for information uh, regarding such nuclear energy projects. It will take you years and years to get it effectively. Because if lawyers on the other side are not interested in giving you that information, they really have a lot of power, a lot of muscle, and a lot of arguments to use to actually drag out for years before they actually do that, if they decide to you know, consider that properly. Now, obviously, when you have certain clauses in a contract like ours, it raises questions uh, you know, to you as a citizen, whether people are for real in 
and whether these are their intentions, or this is something, as you say, that is a result of negotiations and really is more of a lip service. And I think, from what I've heard, from what I've heard, if I may say so, uh, the concern is to understand what is the will of the Lithuanian government when it comes to the exposure and um, access to information. Because to me, again, and maybe I'm uh, speaking as representative of TI um, here, real, the real issue is to understand what information you can get very clear standards in terms of accountability and transparency. And the bigger the project is, the more important it is, uh, the clearer those standards have to be, and the higher the plank for transparency and accountability has to be, not because of the issues of security. I really want to be secure. And I really want to have my kids be secure for years to come. I don't want to invite a village. I really like the city, and I really would like to stay in the country, you know, if everything goes well. But the worst thing that you can think of is you have a project next to you which is built in the shadows uh, because of the concerns about security or commercial interest, which would be even worse. Uh, and uh, you are not sure how safe the entire thing is because I think for a lot of people, from what I've heard, this is another concern. And I really, when it goes down to the bottom of it, just want to know whether I would be able to file, if I'm interested in that, for the price of the road, you know, to the Visaginus nuclear power plant, because I know I can do that with the municipality and the ministry. And quite frankly, I don't really see a big difference between a FOIA request to the Visaginus nuclear plant on that matter and uh, any other request to any other institution. The concession treaty, as it is now, left me with an impression that I should not be sure about that. So again, I'm very thankful to you that you basically have dispersed my fears. <laughs> so just a couple of examples then, Father. Really, really quickly. Um, I think it's, that's what, that was basically what I've understood from people that I've consulted at the international level, that this kind of... Cons uh, this kind of... Um, of clause wouldn't stand up in court, like in you know it wouldn't stand up that 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 you can't have access to certain information about this nuclear power station simply because it's in the contract, because it it's, it's in the contract and the law prevails over that. However, it's exactly uh, the the reason. So in that case, if it's a false promise that that you know to Hitachi that none of this information would 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 be sus would be subject to freedom of information considerations, why does it concern us? Well, it it's, it concerns us exactly because it would probably mean put the public and official in the situation of, oh, the safety report from Hitachi, should we give it out? Oh, uh, you know, and they'll have the doubt. It won't be a, it won't be a, yeah, let's publish it on our website so that everybody can see it. It won't be a, I'll respond to you in 10 days. It, it will be a, mm, a court procedure led by one person for four years. And I think that that's why the problem, our problem with it is because it's a, it's a it just doesn't work either way. Two very brief remarks, really. One regarding the uh, openness and access to information uh, regarding this, uh, the content and interpretation of the concession agreement. I think it's not about what is written in the concession agreement, but about how do you interpret what's written there. And the law, to a large extent, is uh, about how do about you interpretation. interpretation, yes. How, how do you read it? Substance or essence? Or so, uh, one thing is that, uh, indeed, uh, there was such an ent uh, enterprise in Latvia, Latvia's gas, uh, Latvian gas, which uh, was privatized some time ago, and this uh, privatization agreement was never made public, so it's behind uh, closed doors. It's, uh, I've seen the, uh, uh, the room uh, <laughs> to, to this contract, but I've never been able to access this contract, and uh, this is the really public <laughs> so public does not have access to the to the content of this pro uh, of this of this uh, privatization agreement, and unfortunately, uh, the feeling and the conclusion is that the uh, uh, the fees for. Uh, breaking the monopoly and for disclosing uh, the information uh, are too high for somebody to be risking uh, uh, with this, uh, to be playing around with this information, unfortunately. So it only shows how influential is Gazprom. That is one thing. Another thing is, uh, probably you will be laughing at this, but uh, uh, I wouldn't say that the Visaginas NPP uh, advertising campaign in, uh, in Latvia has been uh, 
a particular uh, success story. The first uh, public uh, event about the Vista Guinness NPP uh, took place uh, this year in March um, on the anniversary day of the Chernobyl nuclear <laughs> 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 disaster. And uh, it's unbelievable. And it was organized by the Latvian Investment and Development Agency together with Latvian Ergo and Hitachi on the high scale, Hitachi uh, people, on the, Hitachi management on the high scale. I mean, and the content of this public, affair, public relations event was uh, how uh, the opportunities for the Latvian entrepreneurs uh, to take part in, uh, uh, well, public purchase uh, procedures uh, and construction uh, works uh, once Visa Guinness NPP is being built. So uh, in this, and this is the first, the first public event. So you invite the entrepreneurs here, you promise them that they, they will be able to participate. And then what, uh, you'll suddenly announce that this was just a joke you're pulling out. <laughs> so, you know, lots of things. And, but this, this only reflects how, in, in, what, in what strange ways sometimes uh, mm, parties involved directly and indirectly perceive access to information and what is actually information about the Visa Guinness NPP project, you know? It can be such a lame way of presenting it. And believe me, presenting an NPP project on the anniversary of Chernobyl catastrophe is the last thing any reasonable person would do. So what was what was the piece of data you you don't so know there you would like to any know? Piece of data, <laughs> any papers, uh, any, any facts, and, and anything in there. Oh. So what was your question was what was concealed? Basically, everything was concealed for a year and three months, take out one or two months <coughs> from it, and uh, when the concession came up, then bam, you have it. Uh, but those questions, uh, just. I remark, those questions were raised two year, almost two years ago. So, and the answers to them came after a year and uh, three months. But you, you mean the content of the concession yes. agreement? Yes. No, but I think it, it simply didn't exist, right? I don't know yes. when did you <laughs> drafted Hercules, but yes. I mean it. I don't think two years ago. I mean, uh, yes, it wasn't drafted two years ago, yeah. but I mean the questions were there and they were left out in vacuum. And as if you look at the public discourse, the public, but its interest in the project was left in the vacuum of their own questions, and there were no answers provided. There was no communication from the political side, apart from saying it will increase your energy, our energy security, our energy independence, and it will be economically feasible. Those all was the repeated statements for a year and three months communication from Ministry of Energy. So, yes, I just wanted to put up the situation about the, the rest of the colleagues. You have this you know, study on which the project is based. How many pages did the society saw? I mean, seven pages from old study. No, oh, well, so these that's are... That's the answer what was concealed. I mean, you asked so that, but now, now we are discussing, and you know, I, I don't think there's time, but you could discuss then what was mentioned, the, in, the 
Okay, how much of the business case, how much of the business model, how much of the underlying costs, and what level of detail it is possible to disclose. Now, well, I mean, sorry, there's no time, but now we, we could discuss that. And this is, I think, um, I think what, what would be good, and in Lithuania, we generally, we don't have, um, in my opinion, my, it's my private opinion, of course, we don't have really excellent situation with transparency and with, uh, uh, with the availability of information on the action of, of uh, certain government structures and so on. But uh, it's not helping, uh, the debate is not helped by uh, a, a kind of extremity. Okay, if we, if we ask the government to make public uh, business information which a uh, private entity in the same business would not disclose and if at the same time that disclosure will create some some disadvantage for the government a loss an increased cost a loss of competitiveness for the project well anything like that you know if we ask for that we should understand that we are kind of automatically a little bit either pushing the government out of such kind of projects because they they I mean, if you are at a disadvantage in a business world, you die. That's uh, the sad rule. Uh, or we are pushing the government to kind of close itself. I think, uh, I'm, I'm, I think really the public has a full right to know the basic uh, information about the public interest features, safety, uh, process, selection of the, of the bidders. Uh, and that's uh, to some extent, I mean, okay, and we can discuss enough or not. To some extent, this was publicized. Okay, we knew what is the process, what is the concession tender, who was CAPCO, we knew. We then knew that there was another, another attempted negotiation. We, we kind of knew where these are coming. We, we knew that they were not coming from, you know, behind the closed doors of the Prime Minister's office. Uh, I mean, so, okay, was that enough on the process? I don't know. Well, we, this could be discussed, but... Uh, I mean, we shouldn't ask as a public for absolutely publicizing everything because this is not feasible and this will not help the government to become more transparent. Lydia, this will help to, to close down. You, you, will, you will direct everyone, but just one, one more aspect, I think it's, it's, it's also important, it's not so much uh, in, in the debate. I think once I asked the uh, Riemann Tasveikus from the second as head of the second as part of our project and asked why he so poor communicating with, with, with media, with society, and his answer, you know, our best media, we should buy, because it's commercial, co commercial media here in, in Lithuania. And uh, I think it's also the problem, because when, when we see that media is commercial, they, they don't, don't put information without money. It's, it's not also, also a good situation in, in, in democracy, in, in democracy, in democratic state. But it's just an aspect. Uh, if we could <coughs> conclude now, uh, conclude just the lessons. Lessons. Uh, we have now a situation. We, we discuss the problems, the challenges. But but what are the lessons? Main lessons. If you could could make a minute remark from from Latvian colleague, maybe lessons should be learned from the situation. What's your main point? Yes. To put it very briefly. Uh, we do not envy the Lithuanian uh, government, definitely, about the situation. And on the other hand, Latvia has had its own uh, water gate, in a way, or CHP gate, rather. It was about the uh, uh, construction of the second stage of Riga Conjuration Power Plant number two, which had a lot of contradiction around it regarding uh, the uh, public purchase and regarding contracting of this project, so uh, uh, we already uh, made some uh, conclusions from this, but uh, the conclusion for uh, the Latvian government or for Latvians, uh, for, for the Latvian government from the, from, uh, the Lithuanian situation around the Visaginas MPP would be uh, allow as much uh, open information as possible since uh, step one. Uh, we have experienced many times that once uh, when, when international, uh, big international enterprises try to get uh, 
to put their uh, uh, feet on the Latvian soil through the backyard, it never, in a, in a sing not in a single case, it ended in a positive way for this uh, enterprise. So, uh, despite there is uh, always information which should not be disclosed for uh, security or uh, commercial interest, probably, but security most likely. Uh, I think, to my mind, it's the only uh, true reason why you should disclose, uh, I mean, state security reasons. Okay? So, it's about interpretation, but please be as open as possible since step one. For lesson for the uh, public in general, ask questions proactively. Uh, the more you ask, the more likely you are going to uh, exercise enough pressure to get something back in the situation. Uh, the least thing that you would get out of a situation by going to court, for example, or it is creating precedents regarding uh, court rulings uh, about access to information, interpretation of laws and constitution. Um, I mean, very similar. I think I think we've seen that if you don't make access, if you don't make information available about big projects like this, and like Sergio was saying, the, the bigger, the more important, that the public's properly informed and has all the opportunities to ask questions, you make life difficult for yourself because um, we live in a democracy and, and people will ask for information, they will fight for information. Um, I want to go back to what I said at the beginning, which is that we don't need to invent uh, n you know, national security as if it isn't already in the Freedom of Information Act. If the public has every right to ask for all of the information to do with this whole project, the likelihood is that not all of you know the proper role of the government would then be to to consider what can be what can be disclosed and probably a certain percentage of that would be would be published and a certain percentage of that wouldn't be but we don't need to think that by asking for it suddenly we're putting in danger national security and everything like that there should be proper mechanisms for making sure that all the information that can be in the public domain should be in the public domain <coughs> and for the the very minimum that can't be uh, we should accept that you know it won't be but that's likely to be a very minimum and just finally to come back on the point that that it's been shown time and time again that openness favours competitive, uh, com competitivity, it favours being able to get the best price for, for what you're doing, being able to, you know, if, 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 the, if the government's doing this process in the open, there's a million people going to be saying, oh, that could be better, that could be better, that could be better, and negotiate harder, let's get a better deal with Natei or let's get a better deal with that, and, you know, it's all to gain, really, but I'm pleased to hear that, you know, this is more transparent than other processes that have happened. So, so yeah, and a pleasure to be here, and, and thank you very much for helping me understand the situation that's going on. Yeah, um, uh, just returning back, back to your question uh, about two years and, and one year and, and three months, I think it, it, it is not uh, entirely fair to ask government for, for answers which uh, <coughs> were the result of one year and three months negotiation to ask uh, the results beforehand. It's, it's, it 